What's up, everybody? Welcome into another Car Biz Chronicles episode here. We're going to kick it off with Morgan Matthews. The quick recap of this discussion goes like this. This is one of the most illuminating 25-year-olds I've ever met in my life. I think her approach to the car business is phenomenal. She's all about positivity. She's all about changing the game of the car business. She talks about how even her age bracket isn't necessarily interested in buying a car online. They're, not, they're interested in having fun. It's a huge purchase. It's a big deal. So do me a favor. Think about this as you will. I want you to go out. When you watch this episode, sit and think of yourself as a consumer. Would you want to do business with a person like this? Is this the kind of person you'd want to sit next to? Because I'll tell you what, by the time I was done, I wanted to buy a car from the girl and she wasn't even trying to sell me one. So sit back, relax, and enjoy episode one, season three, The Wonderful Women of the Car Biz. Thank you so much. All right, everybody, what's going on? Welcome into another Car Biz Chronicles season. We are on number three. This is tremendous. Uh, this year, my friends, it's all about the wonderful women of the car biz. That is the highlight of this whole thing. We're going to kick this off the right way with Morgan Matthews of Matthews Motors out of North Carolina. Morgan, how are you today? I'm doing great. Life's good. I love to hear it. I love the energy. Life is good. It is great. Um, I know you, me and Marty always joke that you guys have the best weather. I have the worst weather. How is it today outside? <laughs> is it beautiful as always? Right around this time of year, it starts off kind of colder in the beginning, like in the morning when you first wake up, but then it goes to about 65, 70 degrees. So you can't mm. complain, but mm. then like right around night, it gets cold. So okay. it's kind of weird. I don't right, know. Well, I enjoy it. That's still beautiful weather. That's <laughs> wonderful. So Morgan, you are in the car business. What is your current position as it sits today in the car business? It's really hard to define who I am right now, um, but my main job is marketing and uh, public relations. Pretty much, I work on our brand and uh, work on the social media. I'm really good at social media, so that's kind of what I focus on at the dealership, our online presence, um, and bringing people in the door. You know, I kind of go out and meet business owners, meet different people at, well, before COVID started, it was networking events, um, bringing people in the door. That's kind of what I try to do right now. I, I dig it. I don't think enough people give uh, credit to the brand build, right? So what you do, it's not something that we can sit down and say, okay, Morgan, because you went out to X amount of places this month, we should have sold X amount of cars more. Yeah. That's silly, right? It's a yes. silly way to think about things. It's short-sighted. Um, how did you get into the car business? What's Morgan's story? You know, how, how did it begin and, and how did we get here today? Okay, so I went to college here in, at UNCW in Wilmington, North Carolina, um, and I graduated in 2017, and my dad, we joke, he was having a midlife crisis, wanted to build a third dealership, and his dream was to have a dealership here at the beach in Wilmington, and we all thought he was kind of crazy, but then it, like, came about like he started building it and then my last two years in college I saw it being built in Wilmington right up the street from my college I was like my dad kind of followed me to Wilmington I'm like dad stop I'm just kidding. <laughs> but um so when I graduated in 2017 I actually studied communication studies um so I wanted to do broadcast journalism uh, but my dad was like Morgan I want you to come sell cars for me when the store opens and I was like, okay, dad. So that's how I started in 2017, the store opened and I sold cars there starting off. And I'm very, very happy I did that because it helped me grow up. The car business will do that to you, Morgan. And you've been oh, yeah. around it your whole life, right? I mean, your dad owns his own dealerships your whole yes. life, basically, right? Yes. So when you see that from afar, were you at all apprehensive when he came to you and was said that? Or was it just kind of like natural for you to go, yeah, you know what, dad, I'm down. Because obviously you watch the business. You can see what it does to relationships yes. and people yes. and oh, all yeah. of this. Oh, yeah. you know, how did you approach that? I was apprehensive. I, you know, I have a different kind of personality. I'm not really like, I can get along with people like I'm coming in the, in the store, but I'm not a pressuring person. And sometimes you think that a car salesman has to be, a person that's pressuring and someone that's trying to talk you into something. I'm more of like, I take it as the approach of a friend. I'm a friend. I'm here to listen. What can I help, help you with? You know? And I thought in my mind that I wouldn't be good at selling cars because I grew up around all the car men growing up and I saw how they act. I just kind of never thought I'd fit in, but you know, I 
honestly was pretty good at it because I connected with people and mm. um, I always tell the new salespeople when they come to Matthews Motors, like when they come, when they first start off, never sold cars, I tell them the number one thing is building a relationship with people, like finding a common ground and building that relationship because when you connect with somebody, they trust you and their walls come down. So look at this. We're getting, I didn't even realize we were going to get sales 101 today, <laughs> but here we are. We scored it big time because you know what, Morgan, the basics of that is it's so simple, right? Um, it's, it kind of, again, ties into the Matthews Motor idea, what your dad started, um, you know, with the, the walking man's dealership, this, this theory yeah. of principle that, look, we can help whomever, we can be there for our people. Yes. Um, that's a big part of what you guys do, right? You're very driven in your communities, even though Wilmington oh, yeah. is the newest part of it, you're still just as invested as you are there, as, as you are up in, uh, you know, in the Clayton store or yes. the Goldsboro store. So that's pretty oh, yeah. cool, right? My dad was very passionate about giving back to the community because, you know, back in the day, it was the community that helped him grow. You know, when he had three cars and a boat and a little trailer, you didn't have social media then. You didn't have Facebook where you could post about your business. Right. It was word of, word of mouth business and how you treat people. That's how he started off with a great reputation and that's how he succeeded. And that's what you guys are still, now that's how you're developing it as you've kind of came into that role not in the best way. I mean, it's probably all happened a lot sooner for you and yeah. your brother and all of the things that have happened based on your dad's situation. But yeah. now that you're here, are you, how, I mean, how was that to get to that point, to be thrust into it with everything that happened with your dad? How did you kind of, how did you grasp with that and, and the business? How did you keep those two kind of together? If you don't mind. Um, yeah, I, um, to be honest, I, you know, I left the car business for a little bit. When you grow up in a family business, you sometimes are curious on what a different career would be like. Like, you don't always, you just want to, you just so curious. And I was like, I actually got a job at this really nice bank here in Wilmington. It's not like any other bank. And I worked there for three months and it was weird. Like I'm a strong believer in God. And I feel like God put me there for three months because my dad passed away while I was there. So I, my dad passed away while I was at Live Oak Bank. And uh, so my mom came to me and she said, Morgan, I really want you back at the dealership. And she offered me the position I have now. And, you know, everything happens for a reason to me. And I feel like I was meant to go to the bank to grow up a little more. And I came back with a clearer mindset. And now I'm more confident in my role at Matthews Motors. I'm more confident in what I'm growing into. That's like when you asked earlier what my title is, it's like, I'm a 25 year old trying to grow into the owner role, but that I'm not yet getting until like five years from now. <laughs> sure, sure, no, and, and, that's, and that's what I mean by being thrust into it, right? You're 25 yeah. years old. Um, you know, I, I didn't start really even getting into the ownership side until almost 30. And, and it was, yeah. and that was me, that was me buying into a family's already running business, right? So yes. it's different than you, you are the family business. Um, and, and so here you are, you kind of have to become the front woman. Um, I'll tell you this, this is just on a personal note, yeah. you, have, you have embraced it, how you've changed the ads from what dad did to what you did it was almost it was almost seamless, dude. It was so yeah. cool. People want to learn branding 101. Check out Morgan <laughs> Matthews, all the stuff she does with, with her ads, yeah. her videos. It's it's super dope. Thank you. Um, when you Appreciate do that, does that, I mean, do you feed off of that energy? Is that really, is that part of what you enjoy doing is oh, yeah, that's my representing niche. your dad's brand? That's, that's what I studied in college, kind of like that is kind of using my skills from college. I've always had interest in video editing and I've always been interested in pictures and videos and, um, so I started our Instagram from scratch and now like, this is crazy, but a girl that sells cars for us, I keep, she has great energy. So I posted her on our Instagram a lot. Um, her name's Bree and uh, good morning America reached out to her and actually um, featured her in one of their videos or one of their, yeah. No way. They, they did the same thing we're doing right now. They, uh, vid they video chatted her. her. Well, I'm sorry we didn't get you on ABC, but you know, I do, I do what I can. I promise. No, but like, I was like, and I was like, how did you find, find her? Or like, how did you find us? And she said the hashtags I was using, because um, hashtags are very important. They're um, under, like people don't use them enough. So you think um, they're underutilized? See, I'm, underutilized. That's what I'm. Mean, as yeah. I told you, I'm almost 40, so I hashtags are. <laughs> I don't. 
Yeah, hashtag away. I should actually hire you to do my social media. Because, <laughs> I got you. Uh, you know, my wife does it, and we both look at each other like, what are we doing yeah. up here? But look at so my hashtags Instagram. are important. Hashtags yeah. are important. All right. Because it, it pops up on the explore page. You really want, like, because you want it to pop up where people can see it. Like, people that don't know your page, like, how else are they going to see it? So the yeah. hashtags kind of catch their attention. Okay. I'm learning too. I love this. This is the best <laughs> part of life. So you are, I love that. I love your role. I wish you could get it printed on a business card, which is, is the 25 year old growing into the owner. I, I visualize <laughs> it. I think it's great because it speaks to a, it speaks to the fact that you don't have some preconceived notion that you are the owner. Yes. Albeit whatever it is really. I mean, at this point, it's probably really mom and Val. I mean, if, if anyone's going to be an owner, yes. right? Like you still work for people, but you get to take, you get to, by growing into the role, you don't have to assume all the responsibilities. Do you think that's making it easier for you to share the brand? Cause you're not stressed down by all those things of being an owner. I mean, the things yeah. your dad would probably deal with on a daily basis would make both our heads pop would be my guess. I'm like the type of person, like, I don't really like to call myself a title if I don't put in the work and effort. Like, you know, I'm not going to sit here and say I'm an owner when my general manager, Scott, works his tail off every single day to run the whole store. He's literally focused on every single department. Like, I haven't grown into that and I haven't studied some of the things that he does, which I'm doing through time. Yeah. Um, because right now my job is marketing and public relations. And I do know that I will be an owner one day, but. I don't know. There's not really a rush right now. I guess oh. my mom, my mom, my old. Morgan, Morgan, we lost your audio. Okay, yeah, it said, would you like to mute it? I'm like, what? Yeah, no, yeah. Why would I want to mute it? It did it to me earlier. No, I don't want to do anything with the damn computer. Just keep doing <laughs> what I'm doing. All right, so, so you were backing up. You're talking about mom and not having to be rushed into the role. Yeah, my older brother, Tyler, is like super smart. He's uh, 27. He's two years older than me. Um, so he is growing a little faster into the role than I am. Um, so my mom owns all three. My older brother's growing into that. And then I'm kind of right behind him. Yeah, your brother, I met him when I met your dad for the first time. And the only time I met your dad was out in Vegas. Um, yeah. Right before everything happened, me, we were all out there. It was just, it was just, your dad's one of those people that I'd heard on the phone. He, you know, it was just, <laughs> I was like, I can't wait to meet this dude. And then we partied and just had a great time. Everyone yeah. really enjoyed themselves. And, and I noticed your brother was really, he was listening. You know, he was trying to just kind of understand the role. Yeah. It, was, it was like he's been grooming into it. So your brother's an inventory acquisition maven i love Yay. what he's doing for the goldsboro store we're getting way too yeah detailed. no but he's very like i'm glad i just want to say that i'm glad that he found his niche because yeah. like like i said earlier when you're born into a family business you're very blessed but you want to find something that fits you in that business you know like selling cars was awesome for me and it was god's plan at that time and i definitely grew into that role but um it's not what i wanted forever you know, I yeah. found my niche and it is marketing. It is being out and about. That's who I am. Yeah. And Tyler is, he's very um, like organized and he can find cars and like get people to go pick them up. Like that's yeah. his yeah. niche. Yeah. So. He's, and he's great at that. And that's, that's what I mean. I think that you guys are really showing a hybrid model of how to own a store amongst family. Sometimes it can get nasty. I've been doing this a long time. Yeah. Family working with family can get super <laughs> ugly. People divide stores, stupid shit happens. I can but see that. Guys, you guys both fulfill a different role. I would tell you to not rush at all to be in the role because right now yeah. this is the best thing you could possibly be doing for everyone involved is, yeah. is what you're doing. So that's awesome. Well, thank you. Yeah, that's really cool. So when you look at what your sort of, is is the love of the car business, does it come from that, from the messaging or like, where is the real love for it? I mean, I know it's family business. Obviously it's easy to love that, but where do your, where's your daily passion for the business come from? Well, Matthews Motors, um, you know, our slogan, the walking man's friend, um, we our niche at all the stores is helping folks that don't have the best situation going on. Um, and it, it is so fulfilling to help somebody that never thought they could get a car because of their credit. Maybe they got divorced. Maybe they got really sick and couldn't pay some bills. So their credit got messed up. It's helping people that never once thought they could have a chance and seeing that that's just reassuring knowing that where you're making a difference in someone's life. Um, so that's what makes me happy to, like about the car business. That's what makes me excited to go to work knowing that 
we're making a difference in someone's life. Like yesterday I was sitting at my desk, Bree, the girl I was mentioning earlier, was sitting yeah. in the car to this girl in front of me and the girl started to cry like when she found out she was approved. And that like made me sad. It's just like a reality check. It's like the littlest thing I take for granted. You know, I was very blessed to have parents that taught me about credit, you know, growing up and how important yeah. it was. Not everybody has that guidance and um, seeing her cry and for, with it, happiness and excitement, that was just like, this is why we do this. <laughs> this is why we, you know, we help all sorts of people, not just people that are in a bad situation, but we try to help people that are in a good situation, you know? Right. And that's the thing about it is that's what I, I think that when you talk about fulfillment of helping people, right? I've always viewed this as the second biggest thing most people will buy in their lives. And in some cases, it might be the only thing, it might be the biggest thing they buy in their life. Yeah. And when you think about helping someone with that journey, it is super cool especially when maybe like you say, things weren't the best going for them, right? You know, yeah. I've got friends and family that struggle with certain things and they were able to build things up and you, you were there that day to share with yeah. them purchase. Um, I love your passion and energy for that. Do you guys get a lot? I mean, when you go look at that, like a girl like Brie, yeah. tell me about the cultivation of Brie. Tell me about how you get to a point where you see that in an employee and you say that, because I think more dealerships need what I would consider to be dealership evangelists. Yes. And that's what I would call yes. Bria, someone who is just, you she's know, awesome. massive motors to the health. Well, um, how do we do it? She is a uh, down to earth Southern girl that like, is just so welcoming. And, you know, people that are like that, people that come by a car automatically put their guard down. They just see that loving, welcoming, not so pressuring. I think the pressuring um, skill is just not one, we, one that we kind of avoid because people don't react well to that. Um, but right now, our main focus, we try to hire people that are a little bit younger um, because they're not stuck in their ways. We've had, you know, nothing wrong with guys that have worked other dealerships, but they come to Matthews Motors and our dynamic is different and they're a little thrown off. Um, I've seen some succeed incredibly, but some that didn't because we're not a franchise store and we are subprime mostly. Right. So they you, you, operate, you operate in a different world. People different who think world. the two are the same just because we all move metal is it's yeah, just not the yeah. case. It's just not. So yeah. we we actually honestly, I would say like seventy five percent of our staff is young, is like twenty five, about twenty five. Marty dragging that number down. Yeah, dude, Marty. <laughs> no, I'm saying like the managers are older, but the <laughs> sales staff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Is, but we do have a guy named Gary there. He's awesome. He's like mid sixties, and he like. He's been in the car business for like 40 something years. Yeah. Everybody loves him. I love, <laughs> I love that. So when you approach Bria about it, does she just naturally go, yeah, I'm, I'm totally down. No problem. Or did you have to convince? How did that go? You mean like for her to sell cars? Yeah. Well, for her to want to get it, like for you to feature her a little bit and sort of push her out into that. Most people are very uncomfortable. Oh yeah. No, she was out into social media. You have no idea. Like, um, Bree's significant other messaged me and said, she does not like to be on video. And this was like the first video ever. And I was like, I had no idea she didn't like to be on video. But like she, like if you look at our Instagram, Matthews Motors Wilm, okay. uh, you'll see she's she has tattoos. So she has like the sleeve. You'll see her, she stands out. Um, she just has high energy. And like over time I've worked with her because I work with everybody with the lingo. After doing commercials my whole life, I help them out with the lingo, what to say. And through time, they get more confidence. And they make it their own. And that's kind of what happened with Bree. She started off really shy, and now she is a beast. She's like one of the top salespeople every month. So, so tell me, what is that? How many, I mean, are we talking that she sells 10 cars, 15 cars, 20 cars? I mean, give me some context. I would say like 17 to 20. Whew, 17 yeah. to 20. Now, this is a young lady, right, you said? So what? Around around 25 years old she's you said right That's 20 kind of don't kill me Bree. she's like, <laughs> like you know, to be exact 25 she's 28 25. i believe like 28 29 okay. she's yeah. 28 years old i'm gonna venture to guess you tell me if i'm wrong when she's selling 17 to 20 cars a month she's experiencing income she's never seen before in her life yeah. she's making more money than she oh, ever yeah. thought possible yes. is that fair yeah yeah but she's a grinder she's one somebody that really truly grinds and goes to work on her day off you know, she right. sleeps in for a little and then she goes to work. <laughs> I would too if I were her on her day off. Yeah. But, uh, she is one of those people that definitely, you know, someone pulls up in the lot, she's out there talking to him. She's not one to sit back and just be like, mm, John, we'll get it. You know what so, I mean? 
Do you know what most, see, I've been asking this to a lot of people. So she's just a younger woman in the car business, something where we're trying to, this is what we're trying to push for this season is yes, to encourage more women to join yes. the car business. What, what do you think motivates her? Have you ever discussed that with her? Had any kind of discussions yeah. about what motivates her in the car business? I guess like she has a really kind heart. Cause like, you know, when that girl was crying yesterday, that also was a feeling of reassurance to her to help people. Um, I think Brie actually sold boats before this. So she's not actually been in like the selling world for a little bit. Yeah, wow. So I think that's why she's a little more like natural at it. Um, but like I said, she just knows how to talk to the customer. I watch her interact. She can interact with anybody, no matter the race, no matter the gender, she is getting along with anybody. <laughs> that, is, that, is, that is a hard skill to find and it's one that isn't yes. can't necessarily be taught you've probably seen that throughout your life oh yeah where you meet someone who's a little bit more introverted people are like oh they'll grow out of it they don't typically yeah. grow out of it so that's really cool um do you just focus on do you look at do you work at all the stores uh, in your role right now morgan or you just focus on Wilmington because you live there i go to our goldsboro store i try to go like once every two weeks i'll go up there and kind of help them spice up their social media um I go to Clayton like maybe once a month, maybe once every two months. I go there. They're such a successful store, our store in Clayton. They really are. So, they really are. I know. So like <laughs> Marty kind of, he goes there twice a week. So he'll send me some pictures and I'll post them on the social media sites. So I, I he helps me out with that. Um, but the goal yeah, is he's got to go there twice a week though to keep, to keep everyone calm over there, keep the shit yeah. moving correctly. You know what I mean? I'm just kind of picky though like when it comes to like doing the social media I like to record it I like to take the pictures because I like to the aesthetic means a lot to me I don't know well, yeah well that's what I was gonna say to you when you said you were gonna go for broadcast journalism um did you have any specific niche within broadcast were you hoping to be on the political side were you hoping to be in daily news were you hoping to be in sports was there anything specific daily news probably yeah. daily news um to be honest though like when I was in college I was criticized so much like when you when you through broadcast journalism, a lot of professors criticize you nonstop, which is fine. I can take constructive criticism, but it is to the point where it, it got really draining. Just like really? hearing you're to this. Some, I had a teacher tell me once I was too, I did a radio commercial and he said I was too overzealous. And I didn't even know what that meant. I was like, mom, I was like, mom, this guy just said I was too overzealous. I got to see, I'm really upset. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, you know, going into news, like, you just the people turn on the news because they enjoy it. <laughs> sure, sure. I mean, you might I, as well, your point is you enjoy it, so why wouldn't you know what I mean? If you're going to enjoy delivering the message, if you're going to be who you are, and that that's who you are, like I don't know, that seems like a weird critique to give someone. It like was, being, yeah, it shocked me, but but now you can be whoever the hell you want, right? Yeah. Now you do ads the yeah. way Morgan wants to do ads, which is it's just and cool. I, yeah, yeah, you're right. Do you I um, like? Do you bring friends into the business, Morgan? You're 25 years old. You're 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 a young female. Do you bring do you encourage your friends to get involved in the car business? How do you how does that conversation go amongst people in your peer group? Um, I have brought. I'm I'm scared to be honest. Sometimes bringing friends into the business because, uh, you know, the millennial world they don't like to work that late. And you know, <laughs> look, and, you, know, you yeah. said it, and you're a millennial, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna leave that to you. I, so that's cool. No check mark. Oh, no, yeah. Well, I always like, um, my dad had a big work ethic, so like, I do take after my dad a little bit, but I also, millennials like crave quality of life, they, they crave freedom, and they're willing to accept less money. You know, they're not really. I could have, I actually could have had the financial position at Matthews Motors several years back, but they're the last person that leaves a dealership. And I mean, they make the most money in the dealership, but I love going to the gym. Like I love playing beach volleyball. I love having a little bit of a life outside of the working world. And um, so, well, actually I met this guy, well, I play beach volleyball. So this girl, she's like, my boyfriend really wants to sell cars. And I'm like, I said, there's long, they're long hours, you know, but I mean, you make good money if you put in the effort. And so he's actually killing it now. He's been there for about a month now. Um, and he showed himself last month. Last month was kind of a test to see like, does this guy put an effort or is he, my manager kind of says, are you going to be a caller and like grind? Or are you going to sit there and wait for the up bus? Are you going to wait for the people to pull on the lot? Um, so he's uh, showing his numbers are showing. I love the lingo, Morgan. I love I love a good <laughs> up bus reference. I can I can tell you hang out inside dealerships far too frequently. 
<laughs> my dad used to say stuff like that. <laughs> I, I just, I cannot imagine. I just, again, I only had like 24 hours, but I cannot imagine like what a full, just blown Steve Matthews night out. Like just a discussion of people. It's just, it was just, it was awesome. It was my dad, I got to tell you a funny story really quick. Please, my dad, please. okay. So say like a customer came in and um, they're, they're in the process of buying a car and uh, my dad, like, he'll go over to the booth and be like, thank you for doing business with us. And, like, they're not approved yet. But, like, he's, like, literally, like, harping on, like, oh, my gosh, I can't believe you do business with us. And, like, all this and that. And, like, like we don't know for sure if they're approved yet. And, like, I'm just standing there, like, dad, stop. <laughs> I'm like, you're embarrassing me. Yeah, but that but, probably like, happened to you a lot with your dad. I mean, your dad's a big personality. <laughs> So you probably, I mean, yes. it was, it yes. was huge. Even in a room, I'm telling you, Morgan, even in a room of gigantic other owners <laughs> of his peers, he was still the biggest yes. freaking person in the room. It was I amazing know. to watch from afar. It really was. Well, one thing admiring about him that I definitely take away um, is that he doesn't care what people think about him. Like, you know, he didn't no. care. Like, he would just be himself fully all the time. Loud mouth, love them to death. Like, but Morgan, these guys are in suits and ties walking around this conference. Your dad's in a Matthews Motors polo and shorts. <laughs> like, he's not he does not care. He's not interested in, in anything people and like halfway through the day no. with your brother, he's like, It's time to go to the pool. And they were just they were gone. You know, they were they were cool bond and that was it. You didn't see him yep. over, you know? And so my dad, um, he didn't care. <laughs> no, he does not care. He does not care. And that's something I think that is that's something that I myself uh, embrace. I don't really, I don't care what people think of me. I've said it a million times on the show and other yeah. shows. I just, it's not important to me. Um, but for what you do and your position, your dealership, you got to care a little bit more because you yeah. put yourself out front. You're a younger female. How do you sort of balance Morgan in public because you're a public persona in your area? I mean, I'm yeah. not to say people stop you in Wilmington, yeah. but they may. You guys do a lot of commercials. Yeah. You know? How do you sort of balance public Morgan versus work Morgan? Is there a difference for you? Um, well, growing up doing car commercials in Clayton, you know, I was always seen on TV growing up and I'm not going to lie. Growing up, I did get in trouble and I, my dad's dealership was right across the street from my high school. That did not help me out. You know, like I would be talking in class and my teacher's like looking out the window, like Morgan, <laughs> but like growing up, I got a taste of what it's like to be in the public eye, you know? So when I got yeah. to Wilmington and started being on commercials here, I noticed that a lot of people were picking up on it. Um, and I'll be out at a bar on Sunday watching football with friends and my commercial pops up. And I'm just not like a huge drinker. So I can't really embarrass myself in that sense. Good. That's good. <laughs> no, mean, that's important. Look, it's, I know. It's, it's, it really is. No, it's important. I like one or two here and there, but like, I'm not really, since I've gotten older, I like, you know, sober fun, sober life. Sure. Um, but I guess when I'm gym, out about sober life. Yeah. I mean, you just you I take know. you take care of you, which is important because again, yeah. for, for your place in the dealership, you have to be at your best when you're there. And yeah. so you may as well take care of what drives you, right? So that's yeah. really, really important. Um, can you give people at, at you know in your position, so in a marketing position, do you have any sort of a calendar, Morgan? How do you go about your post? Or do you just say, hey guys, if something's going on within the day, let's just post or let's talk about it. Like, how do you get to your content? Um, I try to post about three or four posts a day on each platform. So I try to, you know, think of what people would like. I want people to um, see different personalities. I want people to see, you know, the young guy that, that's a farmer. I want them to see Bree. I want them to see the African-American man. I want them to see that we have a diverse group of people working for us. And I want them to see our diverse selection of vehicles. I want them to see our trucks. I want them to see our sports cars. I want them to see our minivans for the moms. Like I want, I want to have, I want to touch so many different people. So I, every day I think, what can I do to target this audience or these people? Um, you know, our Clayton store sells a lot of high-end vehicles. Like we had, it's awesome. Like I love high-end cars. So we have some really cool ones at our Clayton store. So when I post those, I get the millennials. I get the, the guys that think they have money to blow, but they're just being cool. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, like we have this really cool um, Corvette, this red Corvette. It was really nice. I posted it on my Instagram and all these guys were like, how much, how much? I'm like, are they just messaging me to talk? Are they actually interested? <laughs> but like, no, but 
I don't but know. That's what I'm talking about, though. That's what I mean, though. Putting yourself out there in the public persona when people yeah. start like, oh, you're really great at your commercials, and it turns into it, you know, trying to slide yes. into oh, yeah. That right? was today, but, actually. That happened today. But I'm nice. I like, I mean, I'll try to be nice to everybody. I'm like, thank you so much. Like, have yeah. a good day. Like, I'm yeah. not one of those people that's like, I'm too cool for you. Like, I've yeah. never been that kind of person. That's awesome. That's <laughs> awesome. Now, three to four posts a day, that can be a bit of a volume. How do you, how do you keep up with that? Do you, do you plan it throughout your day? Like, how, how do you get, how do you pull that off? How do you make sure you execute on that? I walk around the dealership and I just kind of look at things and like, think of what can I do different today? Because I don't like the same old thing every day. Um, so today or yesterday, we're actually giving away a car. We've never given away a car. We're really excited about it. We're giving away a little 07 Toyota Matrix. Nice. Um, yeah, so we're giving it away in December, December 24th. So right now my content is kind of centered around coming to register for the car. We want to get people in the door. Um, but the, the gist is they have to test drive one of our vehicles in order to register. So they're cool. coming, they get to see who we are. They drive one of our vehicles, they get to meet our staff. So that kind of plants a seed, you know what I mean? So that's I what do. we're doing right now. Um, I'm trying to push that message um, now, along Morgan. with- other how stuff. do you balance that though, where people, because salesmen, right, they're going to really, some of them are going to push hard. Managers are going to ask that they push really hard. Yeah. Are you making it more of a come test drive and meet us sort of an open door event? Or do you think people are going to expect to sort of be, be sold in that sort of environment? How do you, how do you approach that? Uh, I'd say kind of in the middle. Like, I mean, we're not really like, I want people, when people come to the dealership, they know what's up, you know, like, <laughs> like. People don't we just visit to, a car dealership to waste time on a Saturday, right? Yeah, I mean. We try not to, we try to steer away from the stereotype of car buying is just, ugh. You know, we want people to come to the store and not feel like they have to buy something. Of course, we'd love if they did and we want to do business with them, but I want people to come and register and not feel like they have to buy a car or have to, you know, test. Well, they, we have, they have to test drive a car. Sure. So I don't want them to feel pressured. But you want to put yourself on their radar for future of consideration. Yes, that's of the course. Point. That's yes. the point. Yeah, that's what we're doing. That's, and I don't think enough people get that about social media in general. I just, I think people like, expect this. Okay, sell, 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 sell. Yes, Who yes. sells? Why do you want to sell anything? Like, you probably go out and highlight a cool car. Are you going out trying to sell it? No, you're probably just being like, oh. check out our inventory. Look what we yeah. have. And people will be like, yeah. that's dope. When you say yes. you like high-end cars, give me one of your favorites. Um, I really love Audis. I don't know why. I drive an Audi right now. Um, what do you really, drive? I drive a A4. Nice. It's a black. It's a white A4, but I have I like the blackout package with, and I painted the calipers red. So like, it just has this really cool sporty look to it. Um, but the S line in Audi, I like yeah. that. They're That's nice. A nice car. But like That's that nice car. dark gray with like tint and like the blacked out look. That's what I, that's my dream car. That's so. a good one right there. We'll just put it on the list. Tell Marty or your brother, go find it. And they'll bring it in for you. And it'd be no I told problem. Them. Yeah, that's, that's awesome. No, I used to, uh, I used to really, when I used to be a used car manager, test driving cars, you'd be, you get to see all kinds of different things. Yeah. And Audis were one of those cars that you, to me, when I got in, I loved them. Like the Audi all yes. road, I'm a wagon nerd. So the that's Audi okay. all road was super cool. Yeah. For that's funny. Just drive smooth. You know, That's good pickup and drive smooth. <laughs> that is for sure. So um, how do you kind of see, do you see now all the pandemic, right? Blah, blah, blah. Change yes. the way yes. people buy cars, blah, blah, blah. Not really. Uh, you're, but you guys have evolved. You guys are selling cars digitally. You're delivering cars. You're doing all these things. How do you see it from people in your age range buying cars? Do you, do you think this is going to continue to flow in this direction and people are going to want to be less in person, more digital kind of, what do you think of the evolution from, from your perspective? Uh, I don't know. It's hard to say for, speak for everyone because I'm the type of person that I have to go drive the car. I have to see what it's like. I have to, I can't just buy it online and have it delivered. That's just not me. You know, some people like, you know, there's Amazon women that sit at home and buy Amazon all day long. Like, those kind of people don't mind buying a car and having it delivered. But right. I, I guess I grew up in the business, so I got to see cars and how they drive different. And sometimes they don't, they mess up, you know, their technology. So you want to, just because you drove a Hyundai Elantra before, don't mean the same Hyundai Elantra, it drives the same, you know, the one we have. Right. So, 
Uh, especially think, in the used car world, right? Especially. Yes. Yeah. I do think there's an increase of wanting to buy online rather than having to come in person. I do think that that's going to become more of a thing. But for people my age, like it's hard to speak for everyone. But if you're, I'm not trying to step on anybody's toes, but it's smarter to go in the dealership, drive the car, see how it you know fits you and look at it visually. Is this right. what you want before you are spending four fifty a month? You know, so because you can't. You, I mean, some people buy things and then they realize, oh, this isn't what I want. It's too late. You 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 know try to go buy another car and can't. <laughs> so you've been around the car business your whole life, and I have to ask you because I have too, and I always wonder this of people in our positions. Do you get approached by friends uh, asking you to help them buy cars, or do you have a lot of people asking you car buying questions? Is that something you deal with? Do other peers yeah. reach out to you for that? Yeah, I have yeah. friends that moved to like girlfriends that went to college with me. Um, I was in a sorority in college, so I have a lot of girlfriends around. They all moved back to Charlotte, and they ask me like, "Hey, Morgan, like I'm about to go buy this car. Like, which brand do you think's the best?" Or, you know, and I always like kind of. If you're looking for an everyday car that's like quality, reliable, I always point people in the direction of like Toyota, Honda, something like that. Um, and I think Hyundai's like underrated. Like everybody like veers away from that. I don't know why, because Hyundai is like the best car with like gas, saving gas. And Morgan, their new technology is crazy. I have a few, I have friends who own multiple Hyundai dealerships and that we work with and I've been in their showrooms and their new yeah. inventory for like but, 40 grand, yeah. you can get a car that does like, I know. Stuff, you know what I mean? Like, it's crazy. Like, they're old. Like, my mom said that, or my dad, someone told me that back in the day, Hyundai and Kia had a different owner. I think it was the dad or something. And then, like, the son took over, and he changed it up. He changed everything. So, they had a bad reputation in the past. So, I think they're trying to recover from that now. Sure. Uh, I'm going on a tangent. But long yeah. story short, my friends, yes, they do reach out to me and ask for car buying advice. Um, typically, they're all they're asking, like, something about buying a car at Matthews Motors. Not, I don't see it too often that people are hitting me up to buy cars somewhere else. See, that's you know? cool though. That's a part yeah. of the brand. People who live somewhere different might not even have you on the radar, but they know you're in the car business. Yeah. And they want to do business with you. And they'll drive. Like my friend, one of my friends, she lives in Raleigh. She was willing to drive to Wilmington, which is two hours okay. um, to look at a Tahoe for her and her husband. So people are willing to drive to get a good experience, to know they're not getting screwed over, you know. Do you share any customer testimonial type stuff on any of your social? Do you ever have customers that you highlight that are happy or, you know, whatever? Is that, is that a part of the thing? I used to when I sold cars. I'd post nonstop, like, because I had that personal connection with everyone. I would post testimonials. I probably should do more of that now that you say that. Yeah, um, I was thinking, you know, how do we encourage someone like Bree to, like, bring that to her customers and have fun with her customers, right? Well, all the salespeople are actually required to take, well, take a picture of the customer. Some customers say no. So, sure. but they're required to take no a problem. picture no of a customer. We do promote that. We want every salesperson to promote themselves on social media, market themselves. They don't realize how far that can go, you know? It, so it's true. <laughs> but you know what? I got to, I got to give you a little uh, side note there. Right. I want them to do that too, but I want them to do it under your label. I don't want them to do it on their own pages because that's no good for me. That's good for them. If they leave, yeah. they can take that page with them. If they build on our page, they're less likely to leave. We can retain them via that. So just You're saying post kind of more of the testimonials on ours. Yeah, right? just a little yeah. bit more about not not greedy. Just if, again, yeah. we're here to build the Matthews Motors brand. We want to make it great for everyone. So yeah. maybe I, I love encouraging salespeople to do it. I just think it should be strictly under the umbrella because then they get in. You let social media on their own salespeople, Morgan. I think you can see some crazy stuff they post that maybe you don't want to associate. Oh no, we've experienced that, and we tell people <laughs> we definitely tell people that um, if you're going to work at Matthews Motors, you're going to have a clean Facebook page. Yeah. You know, you're not going to, some things you just don't need to state or talk about. Yeah. Positive okay. vibes only. Okay. Positive vibes <laughs> only. Do you, do you have that sign somewhere, Morgan? I have to ask you, you're 25 years old. I so. wish I did, but that's what I live by. Yeah. All right. You know, positivity is key. Right. You know, great mindset. It goes a long way. So. That I agree with hundred percent. I love, I love mindset. I love positivity. This is great. This is so much fun. <laughs> I, I just, I love talking to, I love talking to you because you have, you have wonderful energy. It's always come across when I've seen the video cuts of what you do. Thank um, you. As someone else who's high energy, sometimes I find it difficult to stay there, right? And people yes. expect it of you. Yes, how do you do. keep yourself, we've talked a little bit about it, but how do you keep yourself at the high level you're at, Morgan? What do you do to take care of yourself and make sure that you're yeah. focused? Um, 
you know, I start my day off, go to the gym. I get, you know, like I mentioned earlier, fitness is huge for me. So I go get my mind right for the day. I make sure my mind's right. I'm ready for work. And, you know, my dad used to always set the tone of the dealership. You know, when he'd walk in, he, his energy, his positivity, it just radiates, you know, radiated through the dealership. And yeah. I want to give that same energy. I want people to know that we appreciate you. You know, this job's hard. This job can be stressful. This job has long hours, but I want you to know I appreciate you and your effort. And if I'm not like that and I'm not like a bit of a leader, then, you know, some people get discouraged. You know, they don't have that some, like I was missing for weeks, like when I was sick and I came back and everybody's like, I missed you. They they missed that energy that, I don't know. I just like to have fun. I like to laugh. I like to make light of the situation and, um, that kind of keeps people going when you're like that. It's, it's absolutely true. I tell people all the time, I love the smell of a showroom in the morning. I love to walk <laughs> in. I love to see people. I love to hear yeah. coffee machines going off. Yep, I love coffee to hear machines. What, whatever it is, I just, I love to be in it. I love a car in the showroom that's got doors yep. open, windows open, yeah. whatever it is, because it's, to me, I, you know, I got told a long time ago that when you sell a car, you, you, go, you go on stage, right? That's your one shot to be on stage. And every day yes. the stage is going to be different. The customers will be different. And the variety is so great. I, yeah. love, I love the variety of the car business. It's, uh, it's wonderful. Well, look, I'm going to wrap, not wrap this up. I want to take us kind of down that direction, which is okay. the encouragement of younger women, just women in general. I don't give a shit now that I say that out loud. Yeah. I don't care if young or old. How yes. do we encourage more women to join the business? And what would you sort of give them as advice um, along the way? Um, I think like encouraging women don't realize how successful they can be or how much, um, this sounds, I don't know if it sounds bad, but like an upper hand to men, like, you know, when men and women come to buy a car, for some reason, I don't know why they feel better when a woman's helping them. I don't yes. know why. Morgan, I- it's, it's, it's psychology. <laughs> I'm, I'm dead serious. Uh, I did a show last week with my therapist, right? Yeah. And, and, and I was, the same idea. I wanted to ask her, like, why is this the case? We didn't get around to it, but yeah. Um, and no, it's not weird to say. It's a yeah. reality. So yeah. no, not weird to say. But I think that um, it is. It can be intimidating for women when they come into the dealership, and er- there's a lot of men there. You know, growing up, I was around a lot of men, con- like the sales managers and the sales guys. You know, and uh, I want them to know that they can stand a chance too against the men. You know, they you have a personality and you take care of yourself and you can connect with customers and you're a woman, you will do great. So that means whatever you sell, right? You could sell boats, you could sell furniture, you could sell uh, makeup. Your point is if you can do that, you can, you can, you can put that into the car business, right? Yes. If you come to work and you strive to have a connection with people that you meet and you have a good personality and you just go get it, then you'll be successful as a woman. Oh my goodness. I realized that, um, I reached a point after two years that on Saturdays I'd have people coming in. Like I was very overwhelmed. I had like five or six people, families coming in asking for me and I felt really good. I felt like I had finally built this customer base, you know, yeah. and, uh, and you got people about- working for you on Saturday. You just, you're, yeah. you're trying to Morgan half deal. You know what I mean? Everything's a half deal because yeah. everyone else selling your cars <laughs> for you. Yeah. That used to happen then, but, um, <laughs> no, I think, um, one person that was very inspirational. She uh, worked worked for us for a little bit. Her name's Miranda. She was one of our finance ladies. She taught me a lot about the car business. Um, she just was very good with every personality type. I think being able to be flexible and being able to um, have a conversation with different people is how you succeed. Um, do you see yourself as a mentor? You brought that word up. So I wonder, do like in the Bree situation, do you view it like that? Do you, do you take a responsibility for that? Or do you just kind of see it as you being you and, and that will, that will just sort of be what it is as, as opposed to labeling it, which I know you're not a fan yeah, of. No, that, no, so. Yeah. I do try to like, I think in the aspect of doing the videos and marketing yourself, I think I'm a mentor in that aspect um, because I'm confident on camera and I feel like, Some of the people, like you said, they're introverts and maybe not the best at it, but we require everybody to send three videos a week. They have to text me three videos a week. Um, So that's how I have the variety of everybody on our social media. And it brings them out of their comfort zone and they realize they are a lot more successful than they thought. They, they like, once they get that extra push, they're like, wow, Morgan, I'm actually good at videos. I'm like, see, 
So, so cool, Morgan. I do try so to you be require a... this of your salespeople to text you three videos. videos a week. I lowered it down to two because they're also required to send 20 videos to customers a day. <laughs> so we can I, I, I only help get those, I only help like get the video stuff with the vendors in the store. I don't actually see what you guys do with it. So yep. that's pretty uh that's aggressive. We push videos, awesome. videos sell. Videos are what people want to see now. Wow. If I was going to buy a car as a woman and I got a video from like Brie or like a really nice girl, like, hey girl, I noticed you're interested in this Jeep Wrangler. Um, huh. I look forward to seeing you at six. I'm like, wow, this girl looks friendly and fun and cool. And like, I the stress and anxiety it would go away. You know what I mean? Yeah, like I do. Are I, more do. I love hearing you say that though, because it's so, you don't realize this because, well, maybe you yeah. do, but it, it, that's such a progressive mindset. Yeah. Uh, because in our business, it's about today, sell, today, sell. But if we just took the sale out of it and just said, today, I want to introduce you to video. And today, yeah. I want you to use yeah. this. How do you find yourself being able to stay on top of people with that sort of a, like, how do you make sure they get the three videos or the 20? Like, Oh, I, I walk by every day and I say, got your videos yet? <laughs> well, no, like, you know, I noticed like maybe one guy stayed late till like 9 p.m., Kind of give him some slack you know i'm like he stayed there late um but they all know i'll remind them in the meetings that uh don't give me your videos you know and i'll also walk out with them and film it myself because i have a different way i like to film and get the cars behind them like i make sure to film it in a really cool way that's appealing to the audience you know some of them love them to death they go out there and they just record in front of the same truck every day and i'm like no today we're gonna do something different today we're gonna go in front of the corvette or we're gonna go in front of the building I, trust me, I, I feel you. I shoot every every episode of this show. This, change it up, change it up. For the last, well, okay, all right. So, so no, no, but but I do I do on Fridays. I go outside. I get a whole new setting. My wife and I are big hikers. So I like that. On Fridays, I, I call it Get Outside Fridays, and I, cool. I spread the I spread the word that way. But no, this is yeah. This is just part of how it is. So. Let me ask you this. I want to, I want to wrap it up. This was okay. your, I'm, I'm going to, I'm going to break. People are going to not believe this, but we're going to tell them it's true. This was your first zoom interaction. <laughs> oh my gosh. That's bad. How did it go? It, I had to have my roommate. She's, she's in her room. I said, come help me. Like she like, <laughs> I was like, I had to download it first. Wow. That's bad. But like, <laughs> Okay, the dealership was up and running during COVID. Oh, yeah, no, you guys, so we were you guys able, never really had like Zoom. Yeah. I'm such an in-person person. Sure. Like I, but I have to get with the times. Get with the times, Morgan. Sure. So well, here you are, Morgan, your first Zoom, and you did, you did good. You hey. had one little update hiccup with a volume thing. Um, I know. We're, I actually we're totally came good. home at 2 o'clock to make sure that I could uh, be ready by 4. Well, Morgan, Morgan, you logged, you, you must have logged into Zoom or done something because at 2.10, I got a, meet, a notice that said, hey, someone's in your waiting room. I'm like, nah, dude, this girl, this is way too early. And well, wait, if she thought it was at 2, now she's late. So that ain't real. There's no way that happens. One thing about me, I've never, ever been late to work, ever. Like, I am very, very particular about being on time, always. If you say 7.15, I'm there at 7.14. If you say 4, I'm there at 3.50. Like, I've never been late. And I don't know where I'm sure that. you're 25 years old. I, uh, I don't know why I'm just paranoid. Sure. I think, I think it goes back to middle school when you're like, you're at your locker and like the, the bell's about to go off and you're like, grab your stuff real quick. Like, I think, that, <laughs> <laughs> I think that is what has caused me to be like this. So <laughs> middle school fear of the bell. All right. Very good. Very good. We unpacked some real shit here today, Morgan. Good job. I'm really proud of you there. That was, uh, that was really good uh, and, and totally non sequitur, but it was funny when you mentioned LOB because my wife and I, we banked there. Uh, you did at what? Live Oak, at Live Oak oh, Bank. Yeah. You, so when you really? said that, I was like, oh my God, that's, that's so funny. We, uh, we do and it's like here in North Carolina, kind of crazy. Yeah. It's a digital Live bank. So oh. where do I care where they are, right? I mean, it's a digital bank that allows me to put my money I there. And, uh, yeah. I love, the, I love the concept. So it's great. Yeah. It's President Trump spoke about it too. It's kind of okay. crazy. That's pretty wild. I did not know I that. I know. Yeah. I did not know that. Um, <laughs> Morgan, is there anything else that you want people to know about the car business before we sign off on the first episode of the Carvis Chronicles today? 
I want people to know that not every car dealership is the same. You know, we try to, like I said earlier, we try to steer away from the stereotypes and we want people to come and buy a car and have fun. You know, like car buying experience should be fun. You're investing in something that you're going to have for a while. It shouldn't be a drag. It shouldn't be something that you don't look forward to. We want people to come to a place where the staff is happy and positive and ready to help and listen. Um, we're listening to you and your situation and we're here for you. We want to change up the vibe of the car business scene and, uh, like I said, make it a fun experience. <laughs> Positive vibes and fun experience. Positive vibes right? only. You heard it here. That is Morgan <laughs> Matthews. Morgan, thank you so much for thank joining you. me. You have been an absolute treasure. Folks, that is the first episode of the Car Biz Chronicles next week. I'm going to bring you yet another wonderful female. Make sure you tune in. We'll be talking all about the wonderful women of the car biz. Thank you guys so much and have Thank a great you. week. Thanks, Morgan. Thank you. Bye. Bye.